talk about being a coach on and off the field, there's so many similarities between the two. And Jen, who's a certified progress coach, is a soccer coach and coaches the youth. And it's one of the reasons that she and I have connected so well. And I've coached boys volleyball on and off for the past 30 years. We as leaders have to realize, we as parents have to realize, there's some synergy between the two. Welcome to Coach On and Off the Field. I am Jen Ziner, coaching strategist and trainer with Progress Coaching. I am so excited to be here to bring our first lesson in this series that is titled, What Do Your Employees Think About You? And so I start with the answer to that question. Do you know without a shadow of a doubt what your employees actually think about you? I'll wait, right? Self-reflection time. Because this was a hard question for me to ask myself, especially to, to realize the truthful answers to some of these. There's a lot of great responses, but some of them are um, a time for self-reflection and a time for self-adjustment. And so if you're like I was, you're a manager that you're like, you know what, I'm hitting my goals every single month. I am, My team is achieving great success. We are recognized as the Southeast region is always winning. We are, we are top of the notch, so I must be the best manager that they've ever had right? And so this was definitely a hard realization for me because I was in that manager prior to my coaching and implementing coaching into my managerial style. I would come in and I would be so distracted by the tasks and the, the goals that I had achieved that my managers were going to hold me accountable for, right? I was held accountable for an entire team. They were accountable for their individual goals, but yet I failed to make sure that they knew that their individual goals that they had were not only helping the team success, which was that thus my success, but they were also going to help them to achieve whatever their career tracks were. So whatever their growth looked like within the company, I wanted them to know that they were applying those those skill sets that they were achieving every month to get there but I never made them feel that way and they definitely felt like they were just trying to achieve my personal success and so how many times we do that even in this time that we're in do your employees feel like they're a contributing factor to the team or do they feel like they're just on your team and they're what they're doing is just helping to promote your success and so the same thing goes on the soccer field too, right? Um, because I would have seasons um, prior to the season that I'm highlighting now where I would have that uh, that winning mentality and I would get players on the team that maybe their skill set wasn't as, as superior as some of the other kids. And my end goal was just winning the game, right? So you can compare it to I just want to be awarded the top manager at the end of the year. And so my goal was I got to win this game. So maybe I didn't give as much time to some of these players. And some of these players were coming from broken homes and brokenness. And because I wasn't giving them the play time and I wasn't um, take, seeing them as an individual and showing them appreciation, they would end up quitting and choosing their broken home lives over the field. And that's heartbreaking. And so you ever heard that saying, um, employees or players, they don't quit their jobs, but they quit their manager? How many times has that happened to you? It's happened to me before. Safe place? You can answer that question fairly, right? Self-reflection time. How many times has it happened? Because I know that I can ask you that question with such great conviction because it has happened to me many times. But once I started implementing coaching strategies and coaching principles to my management philosophy, that's when I seen a great shift in my retention numbers. And the fact that my employees felt like they were contributing part of my team, their team, our team. And so I ask you, how many of your employees now, especially in this crisis, how many of them return phone calls to you? Are you struggling to get them to reach out to you? They feel like that you valued them before the crisis. And so now you're really struggling during the crisis. Or did you, do they feel extremely valued? And they're like, absolutely, you know, coach absolutely manager whatever we can do to get through this together so we can get back in the office because I miss seeing your face like what is that perception what does that look like and what do you need to shift in order to change that to where that it is a positive so that when you do reach out and ask for a favor from them that they're not going to look and be like here we go again right so what does that self-reflection look like especially during this time we're taking this this time out to really see what our employees think about us and so during this season that I'm highlighting now um, where I had a, a losing season, you know, I came into it as a winning coach. I won every single season, every single game that in fact players knew that if I, they were getting coached Jen, they were going to win the game. But unfortunately this season we lost every single game. I had 21 different skill sets 
And I unfortunately, I was forced to change my coaching strategy in the middle of the fourth quarter, if you will. I no longer could go in just assuming we're gonna win that game and assuming, assuming that if I taught a skill or I stressed a skill, I role played a lot, that the players were actually gonna pick it up and apply it. And so I had to start seeing these individuals for the skill sets that they did have and how could they be a contributing factor, a positive factor to my team without focusing on what they need to change because I only had a short season, right? And some of you, we have short quarters with goals. So we have to figure out what can we do during this short quarter or the short goal in order to get a winning score out of it. And so um, by the end of the season, by taking a look at the how each player responded to appreciation or they felt appreciated, by the end of it, they were able to realize that they were a part of my team, their team, everybody's team, right? And so they started ha developing individual goals. What was my goal for the season? I'm just here because mom's making me be here. So my goal here is just to not have mom on my back because if I don't try, mom's gonna yell. So that's my goal. So I knew that, so that was our focus. Maybe their goal was I wanna try out for a competitive team, but unfortunately finances, we're not where they are right now, but I would like to still work on my skill set. So I knew that that's something I could help with that player for. Maybe they're, they're just like, I just, I'm out here um, just to have a good time, but I, I'd like to lead, I, I, my skill set is great. So now let's let them lead a couple drills, right? And so depending on what that was, and I started to see that they started teaming up together and they started having fun and enjoying it, meeting and exceeding their individual goals, developing team goals that I didn't have to be a part of. They were coming up with it on their own. And then together, they actually took home a victory in the big tournament after a losing season. And so my winning mentality wouldn't have done that for us. It was having that coaching mentality and seeing individuals for who they are. Those Jen's coaching methods and everything made us a strong team that went from nothing to winning Judges Cup. They are. And author Stephen Covey, um, author of the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you haven't read that book, I highly suggest it. He says that um, the next, next to physical survival, the greatest need of a human being is psychological survival to be understood, to be affirmed, to be validated, and to feel appreciated. And so at, when a player or an employee does not feel appreciated, that's when you're gonna see that cyclical effect of discouragement and negativity on your team. Your player, that's when your players are gonna start out, they're like, man, you know what, I show up to every practice, I show up, I try my best, my skill set's not as, as good as you know Joe's over here, but it's still, you know, I'm trying every week, and coach is still benching me. So now I'm discouraged or your employee that's like, man, I have hit my goals every single week. And at the end of the month, I achieved my goal. But you know what? Our team didn't achieve their goals. The manager didn't recognize me. I'm discouraged. And then there's that shift where they become negative because you still repeat that same cycle without maybe even realizing it. And so now that same player is like, I may not even show up to practice this week. Or if I do, I'm just going to complain while I'm here. I'm going to be against Coach Jen. I'm going to see how many players I can get against Coach Jen as well. I'm gonna see how disrespectful I can be towards her and how many players I can join in on that. And in the office, this is where you insert your negative Nancys. This is where your reputation becomes an, a, a, a result of your actions, right? Where they're starting to bash your reputation. Man, my manager is not really good. How many employees can I get on to agree with me that said manager is not the greatest? And that's when you develop that cancer within your organization, if you will, which is a very dangerous territory. As managers, you understand that, right? And so it's a territory that nobody wants to be in on the field or in the office because both of those are then going to result in players quitting your team and employees quitting your office. Both we don't want, right? Because our job as managers is to retain that retention and keep employees on our team and, and make sure that they feel appreciated so they can become the very best versions of themselves. Being a good leader and being such a good coach, we were able to accomplish so much more. Um, the Five Love Languages is a book for personal relationships, but the author, Gary Chapman, he wrote a book, which I highlighted in one of my articles, you can see on my LinkedIn page, of the five languages of appreciation in the workplace. And in this book, he took that same concept, but he applied it to the workplace, and how can we make our employees feel appreciated? Because he says that what makes one person feel appreciated is not gonna make the next person feel appreciated. Because we all have a number one language of appreciation or communication, and when that number one language is not communicated, we are not gonna feel appreciated. 
We may accept um, appreciation in all five of those um, languages, but until that number one language is actually spoken to us, we're not gonna feel validated, we're not gonna feel appreciated, and we're definitely not gonna feel wanted as a member of that team. We're gonna feel like our manager doesn't understand us and there's gonna be a major disconnect all the time until you make that shift to really understand what does make them uh, feel appreciated and what am I doing wrong? And it may just be that you're speaking your language to your employee and they don't understand that. It's like speaking English and Spanish, right? If you have a Spanish speaking employee and you only speak English and I keep trying to speak English to them, they're not going to understand. And if they keep trying to speak Spanish to you and you're only English speaking, you're not going to understand, right? And so there's that disconnect. It's not because you two don't get along or you don't like each other. It's just you don't understand each other. And that's where these languages of appreciation come in. So I highly encourage you, if you haven't taken the test, to um, go on and take it. I will put a link on here for you. It's fantastic. It has changed the way that I coach on and off the field. A fantastic um, book when you can truly understand those languages. Um, because when I applied that to the field and I understood the 21 different languages of appreciation that existed amongst these 21 boys, I was able to speak to that um, and speak to those languages. And that's where I seen that cohesion begin to take place where these empl or these players actually began to start to play together as a team. was like, man, Coach Jen really appreciates me. And it wasn't always easy because our languages were not always the same. You know, my number one language is uh, words of affirmation. These boys sometimes that are not always give me words of affirmation and that was not always always their um, language neither a, a majority of them their language was high fives and pats on the back and that one is uncomfortable for me and so that's another thing you have to think of you know when you're a manager too is if your number one is their or your number five is their number one you both got some work to do right and vice versa and so um, that's where coaching really comes in and making that shift um, because a lot of times the word manager and coach will be used interchangeably as if they were the same thing and had the same meaning. But those of us that have had a bad manager, which is probably all of us, you know, those managers that are um, goal centric, they are task focused, and they're not employee centric at all. We're like, dude, my manager was not a coach. Like those are not the same thing. So we kind of cringe a little bit at the thought of them being the same um, meaning. And so, but however, coaching is absolutely a concept that all managers can learn and they can excel at it. And when you do, that is where you're gonna see that crazy drastic shift and the way that your employees respond to you as a manager and as a team, as, a, as an inclusive unit. And it's, it's incredible and fantastic. She was always there and uh, she never let us beat ourselves up after every loss and uh, she, was, she was, it was very good. And so when you dedicate your time to understanding what makes your employees feel appreciated, um, that it's, that's the moment that you're going to see that, you know, see that shift. I remember a time in my manager career right after I began uh, coaching soccer and started realizing the importance of coaching and how I can apply that to my management style as well. I was um, managing a team of a wide variety of people. I had some folks that were retired and this was their second job. And so I couldn't help them feel appreciated if I would give them time off, right? If, if that's how I rewarded them because they were here to get out of the home. They wanted something else to do. Whereas I had other employees that had brand new families. And so to be rewarded with time off, that was like, wow, you know, my manager really appreciates me and understands what I'm going through. They, she understands that I don't want, I can't stay late all the time, right? Because I have a little baby at home that I want to enjoy that time. And then I had employees that were like, you know what, I'm, you know, just a, a single uh, person, you know, whether I have time off or I don't, I'm, I'm here to work. I have a hard working mentality. Um, but what I do enjoy is when my manager recognizes that and does acts of service to kind of help me out a little bit. And so I had one employee that had that language and he was like, you know what, for my birthday, I really want a pinata. And I'm like, okay, let me speak your language of appreciation, right? So I went out and bought a pinata and a birthday cake. Brought it into the office and at our lunch breaks, we did a pinata at the office. And so, wow, that's so crazy and out of the box, right? What it did is it spoke each language to each um, employee. I didn't speak that same language to every one of them, but what it did is it made them all buy in to me. They were all in for Coach Jen or Manager Jen at that point. And so when we had a team crisis, they were willing to step in and help out because they knew that I would appreciate them and reward them based on their um, language of appreciation. 
So when we're positive and we let kids know and we let our employees know that we have their back and we're invested in their strengths and we're going to go along for the ride and we'll do whatever we can, it builds trust, it builds transparency, but it also builds something called effort. Where there's effort, there will be progress. Where there's progress, we will start to have more predictable, sustainable Excuse results. Me. So no matter where you are in your coaching um, conversion to your uh, in your management style, you, know, you can apply four simple principles to start that conversion process from manager to coach or to even just hone and refine your skills as a coach. And you can just add four principles to that so that your employees will be receptive to this coaching mentality that you're trying to implement and instill. And the first one is just to practice praise. And so it's as simple and self-explanatory as that. And so you find the small victories and you celebrate them. In my season of losing, I could not celebrate a win because we weren't getting it. And so I had to find the very small win. So I would teach a, a simple basic skill during the week. And that's what we would practice every single week. And then when that skill was applied in the game, so I knew going into the game, we weren't going to win. We weren't going to come out as a victor. I had high hopes. That's with my winning mentality, right? I wanted to. But I knew that that couldn't be my goal going in. So my goal was to just look for that skill being applied on the field during that game. There was going to be tons of mistakes probably made, but as long as they applied that one skill that we focused on, they won to me. And I let them know that I was very proud of them for applying that one skill and for using each game during the season as practice for the big tournament game. And I instilled that positive place to fail so they knew, okay, I can fail, but Coach Jen is still gonna see the positives. And in the office, you know, the same principle can be applied. What small victories do you see now? What are your employees doing, especially during this time of crisis? Are they, do you have someone on your team that is still excelling? Praise them on the Zoom call. Do you have an employee that had on the Zoom call, a dog jumped in her lap, but she still handed herself with poise? Dude, praise that, right? It's the small victories that we've got to praise. And is your team still earning your goals during this crazy time? Whoa, praise that, right? We have to just find the small victories to start to build that positive culture on our team so that our employees buy into us as well. The number one thing that kids do not like about youth sports is the drive home with the parents. And it's in a study by the American or the coaching, uh, Positive Coaching Alliance. And what they show is that what we tend to do as parents is go into corrective action mode. You should have done this. You gotta practice more. Really what kids wanna do is they wanna have fun, they wanna be with their friends, and they wanna win. There's a 50% equation on the winning. There's a winner and there's a looter, loser. There's only a 50% chance that's gonna occur. So if we can focus on the experience and having them get better and focus on the good things that they're doing, don't we need to do that in the corporate world? How do I know that? Every time I do public speaking, I will ask people, what happens when an employee gets called into the boss's office? What's his or her first response or thought? Do you know I've never in 23 years had anyone say, oh, they think their promotion's ready. It's usually, uh-oh, what did I do wrong? That's the typical response. Why? Because we've cultivated that. So when you're coaching people on the field, there is a lot of transference to the field, which is the corporate workplace. So think about calling people into your office for the good stuff. Think about praising your player. So Number two is reinforcement. And so every game, these players knew that they were not going to see my winning mentality come out, come out because I made a personal goal that they were not going to see that Coach Jen always wants to win mentality. They knew that I was going to find the small victories, I was going to celebrate them, and I was still going to award an MVP at the end of every game. And you're thinking, MVP after a losing season, why in the world? Well, because I was trying to instill that positive culture. And when I seen the positivity and I seen that specific skill that we practiced being applied to the game, so that next week I could introduce a new skill to be applied to them, watch for that. And then it's just a building, right? So we, you can see skill building on the, on the field because they already excelled at the skill the previous week. Now I've taught them a new one. Now they're applying both skills. That's a huge win because as a team, we're, we're getting better, we're getting stronger. And so I always had an MVP. And so in your office, same thing, reinforcement. Every time that you see this, how often um, are you allowing, you know, maybe that person that is achieving their goals 
let them lead a Zoom call maybe, right? So just to have that reinforcement, the positivity showing that I'm still gonna award that in this at this time that we're in, this, this crazy crucial time. And so always having that consistent, safe place to fail, but yet knowing that we're still gonna highlight your weakness, or we're gonna highlight your successes. We're not gonna highlight your weaknesses, even though we recognize that they're absolutely there, but we're gonna help you use your strengths to build upon your weaknesses to help you become a better version of you and a better member of our team, and thus helping me be a better manager for you. And number three is promotion. And so promoting your people, and so highlighting them, always letting them know that you're there for them, right? And so at every practice, having someone and just talking, re-talking about the good things that they've done, promoting the successes that I've seen in them, always letting them hear how proud of them I am. And so reiterating, so using that reinforcement and bringing that into promotion and always promoting the positivity that I want to see on my team. And in the office, the same thing. How many of your team members do you have that that do want to that do want to lead? You know, maybe they are excelling really well, and maybe letting them run a call, as maybe let them run a training on something that they're excelling in. Have you taken the time to see um, what they're doing really well, even if it is super unique? Let them train the rest of your team members on that. Promote that skill, promote that success, and let your team see that you're all in for them, so that they'll thus be all in for you. And number four is investment. And this is probably the most crucial and important. This is where you're investing in your people. You're taking the time to truly learn the individual needs, desires, and aspirations of each one of your employees, you know, or your players, and write it down so that you know and so you don't forget. And over time, you'll be able to speak to that. But when you're in the middle of your conversations with them, asking about their kids if that's important to them, telling them, hey, you did a really good job today, if words of affirmation makes them feel appreciated. Or maybe their um, number one language is acts of service. How can I help you today to achieve your goals? That small um, communication question is gonna go a long way with someone that that's their number one um, language of appreciation. And on the field, you know, um, I would always um, invest in them, you know, taking that time to learn each of those employees or those players and watching them to be able to contribute and, and learn them individually um, where they saw that I was all in for them. I could see their individual skill sets just flourish on that field and then start leading the teams. I would be able to show up to practices towards the end of the season and not even have to do instruction because they were taking, they were running the beginning of the drills. They were starting their warmups together. They knew that I was invested in them so much so that they became invested in the team themselves. It was an amazing, crazy transformation. And then up into that week of the tournament, I was able to ask for five days of practice. And you know what? I got five days of practice from them because I was invested in them, thus they invested back to me. They may have thought I was crazy, like I'm really gonna go in this to win, but they absolutely invested. And so, um, when because when leaders, whether you're a coach on the field, coach in the, in the workplace, when we as leaders and coaches actively um, take the time to learn about our people and engage in their lives and invest our time to study them, to learn them, to be the, so that we can be the best managers for them. That's where we're then going to see a complete shift in the way that they respond to us, the way that they respond to their peers. And then they're going to then be happy to come to work. They're going to start enjoying their work. And then you're going to find joy in work as well. And who doesn't like joy in work, especially in this time, right? So I just leave you um, with, the, with the challenge to, to say, you know, how are you gonna ensure that your employees are fully invested in you and they're all in for Coach U? So how can you make that shift to make sure that your employees are gonna be all in for you, for themselves, and for the team? So thank you so much for listening to this series. I am so excited for um, next week's series. Um, jump on our Facebook page if you're not already there so you can share some of the topics that you would like to hear, some of the trainings you would like to see. Catch my article. Um, you're gonna see this video posted up on YouTube and on LinkedIn and Facebook. So thank you so much for your support in that area. Um, and just again, just thank you so much for your overall support. It has it's been an absolute pleasure. This is a coach on and off the field with coaching strategist Jen Ziner. Thank you so much, and y'all have a great rest of your week.